So Matt just took you through a series of commands that all basically use SSH to actually connect to and work on a remote computer. Um, what we're going to look at now is the other main thing you often need to do with remote computers is to handle getting data on and off those computers. So to transfer files from the computers back to your local machine or to transfer files from your local machine to the computer. So we're going to look at a suite of commands that lets you do that. Um, the first command that we'll look at is no one really uses it anymore, but I guess we'll go over it nonetheless. But the command is called SCP. It does the same thing as the CP command, only it does it over SSH. So this allows you to copy things to like a remote server or copy things from a remote server back. So just like, we can pull the command page real quick. Uh, so just like regular CP, the format of the command, if you ignore the options, the basic format of the hand is SCP source file, destination file. Well, you'll notice the one difference now is before the file, you have a colon and then this other argument where this other argument is the user of the server you want at the host name of the server you want. So you can actually use this with remote hosts, with remote files on both ends. So you can copy things from one server to another server via your computer being a third entity. Uh, more often than not, one of these will be a local file. So one of these won't have this part, it'll just be a regular path on your local machine. The other side will then have the user and host and then will be a path on whatever server uh, either that you're copying from or copying to. So if we play with that real quick, uh, so let's just, I'm not on the VM, I'm on my own machine, but um, uh, I'm just gonna make a new directory that I'm going to use for this demonstration. You can do this or you can just do this directly out of your CD directory, whatever you prefer. So let's create a new file and call it test1 or what have you. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of text in that file. So just like we did last week, we can just echo something to the file. And if we just want to confirm it. OK, so now we have a file called test1 that has the word test inside of it. So I want to copy this to my server. So I'm just on my local machine right now. For you guys, this will be the VM. So this will say CUCS VM. For me, this is just my laptop. Um, so if I want to copy this test1 file that I have in this folder to my VM, I can do SCP, the source, because I'm copying from my local to, or not to the VM, to my server. The source is going to, the source file is just going to be my local path. Now for the remote file, I'm going to do my, so I'm Andy too, you guys just are regular ones, but uh, so I'm going to do specify the name of the server I want to copy to, then I'm going to do a colon, and then I'm going to do the path on that server that I want to copy to. Uh, by default, if I do nothing here, it'll just copy my own folder. Yeah, they yeah. do just the Andy now. Okay. Instead of like the whole. Right. Uh, right. So if you guys set up the, if you set up that alias for Andy for SSH, you can just do it like that. I was not watching that, so I did not set up that alias. So I still have to do it this way. But it, it, there's nothing wrong with doing it this way. It's just, it's obviously easier just to type Andy if you can. And if I, so if I want to specify a path, the path right now is going to be relative to my home directory on the server. Uh, so let's say I just want to copy this into my home directory on the server. I can just leave the path blank. And then this will just wind up in my home directory. So if I run this command, uh, again, I don't have a, if you have a certificate set up, you won't get prompted for a password. I don't have a certificate set up, so I do. And if I run that, we'll see, we get a little bit of, unlike the regular copy command, this does give us some status. It says it copied all of this file, the files no size at all, and it took it zero seconds. Obviously, if this were a bigger file, those numbers would be bigger. Now, if we want to confirm this, I can go ahead and SSH into the server. Oh, I'm just going to run my regular SSH command. So, like, I didn't do all the certificate stuff Matt did a minute ago, so I'm still stuck typing in files. So we can type SSH handy, right? Uh, yeah, you should be able to just type SSH handy. Sorry for the confusion. But if I log into my server now and look, we'll see that I have test one. this one test file sitting in my home directory on the server because we just copied it there. So it works in both directions too. Now that I'm sitting on the server, I can create another file called test2. 
So I'm just echoing to another file called test2. We'll see in my home directory now on the server I have two files. I'm going to exit the server back to my local machine. And now I want to copy that file from the server to my local machine. So I'm going to do just like I did before, only these are reversed. Now the source is the server. The name of the file I want is going to be test2. And I just want to copy it to the local directory so I can just do a dot there. It's going to ask me for my password. Again, if you've set stuff up, you won't. If you set up the certificates, you won't get prompted for your password each time. And now if I look, we'll see it copied it down. And now on my local machine, I have these both files. So SCP can be used to copy files just like you would use the CP command locally. SCP lets you do things to or from a remote server. Questions on what SCP does? So this is real handy. Often you'll go to a remote server, you'll run some code, it'll generate a bunch of data, but then you'll need to bring the data back to your local machine so you can do the analysis on it or make graphs from it or whatever you want to do locally. Uh, so you'll end up copying things back and forth a lot, and SCP is one of the ways that you can do that. So how do you send it down from, a, from Condor to, to the local machine? So basically the same syntax, only differences. So this could just be Andy for you guys if you set that up. Uh, but it's going to be your server name, colon, name of the file, relative to your home directory on the server. You can also use absolute paths here. So I happen to know that, that file, my home directory on that server is slash home slash and 2 slash test2. So I could do a full, the full name of that file path there, and then this should work as well. Yeah. Uh, but if you don't do a full path, so I, if it doesn't start with the root slash, uh, then it's always relative to my home directory. So I happen to know that it's just in my home directory on the remote server. Uh, so oh, okay. this. Other questions? So the next command we're going to look at Similar, uh, it does, so some of you have probably used FTP before, which is used to do the same kind of thing. So this is my, this is the destination path. So the dot just refers to the directory I'm currently in. So I'm just saying copy this file to my current directory. I also could have done, I mean, if I wanted to put it in another directory, I could have done it. I don't know if it'll let me do nothing. Yeah, it won't let me do nothing. So I have to give it at least something. If I just want to dump it into my current directory, the dot means current directory. And because I'm not specifying file name, it's just going to keep the same file name it has on the server. I could also put a file name here, and it would copy this to that new name. Oh, so it's just test. So if I call it like new file two, the spaces will work. You can see why it's nice to set up the certificates. Well, it just copied the test to a file called two. Oh, I guess it, you know, so I lied, it does it, it, it uh, probably because I. So if I do a dot slash and then the, kind of the name for the file. Now it copied it to new file too. So the dot with nothing after it just means keep the same name, current folder, dot slash with something after it means current folder, but rename it. Whatever. Alright? So what if you rename it, why did it test to appear? Uh, because this is always the name of the file on the server. So on the server it's still called test two, right? Uh, this has nothing to do with what I'm actually copying it to. Okay. So, like I was saying, a lot of you probably used FTP before. Uh, it's a, a common way, the file transfer protocol, it's a common way to transfer files back and forth. There's an equivalent to it that operates over SSH called SFTP. Uh, SFTP is very similar to SCP, only it's interactive. So whereas SCP, it's one command and it does everything, I can start an SFTP, it's session based. So it's gonna open a session, I can then like navigate around and select which files to copy. So Sometimes this is handy if you have a whole bunch of files you need to copy. As you saw, especially since I don't have things set up, I would have to type in my password for every individual file if I was doing it one at a time. Or the other problem often is maybe I don't remember exactly where on the server this file is, so it would be helpful if I could like browse the server and pick up the file while I was at it. So FTP is good for this case. So to use SFTP, you just type the SFTP command and then the name of the server. You're, you're, I mean, so for you guys, you could just do Andy. For me, I have to do Andy at user at server.
Okay, so if you'll see when we go into SFTP, our prompts change. So we now have this SFTP prompt. Uh, SFTP has its, it's not a regular shell. It's not like SSH, we can't just run any command. It has its own set of commands. If we type help, we'll get a nice list of the commands that we can do. Uh, most of the file commands you can use, which makes sense because it's a file transfer thing. So if I do uh, pwd, we'll see the remote working directory is home andy2. The one difference is, in addition to all the commands we kind of talked about, the file commands we talked before, like pwd, now there's a second version of those commands that have an L in front of it that run the same command on the local server. So when we're SFTP'd in, we essentially have our hands on two sides, right? Like we're in a directory on our local machine, and we're also in a directory on the server. So the L command runs the command on your local machine, the non-L version command runs it on the server. So if I run LPWD, we'll see, so on the server I ran PWD, I'm in home andy2. On my local machine, I'm in home asailor, this copy folder I set up, and it's the same command with an L in front of it. So this can become handy, say I don't know what files are in my home folder on the server, so I can run ls and I'll now see these are the two files on the server. If I run lls, I'll see these are the files in my current directory on the machine I'm working on. So if I now realize, well, I wanna copy both of these files, the command to bring a file from the server to my local folder, so it's always gonna be from this whatever pwd folder lists to whatever the lpwd folder lists. The ls command is shows the files on the server, right? Or yes, so all of the regular commands are with respect to the server you just connected to. All of the regular commands with an extra L in front of them are, are to your local machine, the L being for local. So if I wanted to get both of these files and transfer to my local machine, maybe this demo would be a little better if I remove, I don't think there's an LRM command yet. Um, so I can't delete them right now, but I can. Yeah. Right, let's open up another explanation. Oh, it'll let me do that? We'll run anything, hopefully. Okay. So, yeah. So what was that that you said about the exclamation point? If you're in SFTP, I'm pretty sure if you put an exclamation point, mm -hmm. uh, it'll run any command you type, just like you typed it in your local shell. Yeah, that's correct. So if I did star rm, or if I did exclamation point rm star, I just deleted all the files in my copy folder I was in a minute ago. I can confirm that by running lls, which now produces empty. So if we look at ls on the server, I still have my two test files. Locally, I have nothing. I want to bring those two test files from the server to my local machine. So the command is git, and I could just specify them one at a time. Because it's both the files, there's only two files in this folder, and I want both of them. It's a little bit faster is to do a star, which means grab everything in the current folder. So if I do that, we'll see it transfers both files. You get a little bit of status again. And if I do LLS now, I have those two files on my local computer. Make sense? So you can also do the opposite. You can transfer files from my local server to, or from my local machine to the server. Instead of being git, the commands put, but same kind of thing. I could do put, so I mean, this isn't gonna look like it does anything because the yeah. files are already in both places, but I could copy these two local files. They will overwrite the two server files. And you'll see now it says uploading both these two local files that I just downloaded. I just copied them back to the server. Uh, so put does the same thing. I can also change directories. So let's say I want to maybe try to copy someone else's file. Uh, so if I do cd dot dot on the server, that's going to take me up one directory. If I now do pwd, so on the server I'm now in home instead of being in home slash andy2 like I was a minute ago. Uh, if I do an ls, you'll see actually these are all of your guys' user folders that you're working in right now. The permissions are such that I actually can't try to read them. I'll get a permissions error if I try to. Um, but if there were another folder or something on the server, I could navigate to it like I normally do, then do a get to get anything from that to my local machine. I can also change where I'm on my local machine. If I didn't want to move to this, so right now my local machine, I'm in this copy folder, but if I just wanted to copy things directly in my home directory, I could do an LCD, so local CD, dot dot also, and then do an LPWD, and now I'm just in my local directory. So now if I do a git, it's going to save it to my local home directory instead of to that copy directory I was in a minute ago. So it's very similar to what SCP is doing, only it's an interactive shell, so you can kind of dance around on both sides and go hunting for the file you need, um, select multiple files, stuff like that. So what's the advantage between git versus put? 
or who does uploading get? Yeah. Uploading? Okay. Get server to local, put okay. us local to server. Okay. How do you get a folder? I'm sorry? How do you get a folder? Uh, a file, but I try to send a folder. You no. probably, I don't I think, think there is. Dash R and so. Okay, well, so don't rely on this. Traditionally, you can't make folders in FTP. So what you would have to do is you'd SSH in, create all the folders you needed, and then just use this to transfer things back and forth. So there are some, it's not a full general purpose shell. There are no, limitations. You mean get, get whole. Yeah, get so as in like the command get a whole. Get as dash R. So that used to be another limitation. Uh, we can try. So I'm going to try to grab my home, my whole home folder by doing git slash R, and then my home folder name is Andy2. OK, so it does do it all. Um, it's like the past year and a half. Right? So, <laughs> so for years years. and years and years, there was no git R, and you couldn't do this. What you had to do was go into the folder and manually copy every individual file, and it was a pain in the ass. That's also why the next tool that we're going to look at exists. But now you can do this. So if you need to grab an entire folder, the dash R is for recursive. That means go into that folder and call git on every file inside of it. Uh, but like Matt was saying, if you're not on a, if you're working on some NSF research cluster that probably hasn't been updated in 20 years, you're not going to get that dash R. Other questions? So best thing about FTSFTP, oh, damn, they added that. <laughs> On some SFTP systems, you can't actually use, so exit definitely doesn't work. Sometimes you can't even use quit. Um, so if I try to type exit, this demo is failing. So this is a good SFTP client. But often you'll be with a client that doesn't know exit, doesn't know quit. The command to close out is by, uh, which dates back to FTP. So mine's generous, and it lets me use any of those commands. but. If you're in a situation where you type exit and you get an invalid command, you type quit and you get an invalid command, you need to type by. That's how you get out of it. All right? OK, so the last tool we're going to look at um, for copying files back and forth is, again, a little bit more similar to SCP than to FTP. Uh, it's called rsync. What rsync does is it does, it's like, SSC, it's like SCP, but far more powerful. It's a differential copy utility. So whereas SCP is going to copy, so if I SCP a folder from my server to a folder on my local computer, it's going to copy everything in that server, or a folder, it's going to copy everything in that folder. Now, if you're working with 100 gigabytes of data, that's going to take a long time. And often, what you'll have is maybe you copied it before or earlier, and then you just went back to the server and you just changed one little bit of that data, not all of it. So we're using rsync, you can transfer that data, and it'll only transfer what's changed. So it'll be a lot, it's a lot more efficient than SCP. So instead of copying everything, even the stuff you already have, it's only going to copy what needs to be copied. Rsync's actually also very useful locally for this same reason. Uh, the place you get this a lot is if you have a folder full of files you're working on and sometimes you work on them on your computer, but sometimes you work on them on a server and you want to keep those two things in sync, you don't need to copy everything back and forth all the time because most of those files are probably already the same in both places. So using rsync, you can just copy the things that have changed uh, and help to keep these two folders in sync. So the rsync syntax is very similar to the SCP syntax. Let's see if I can set up something that will actually look good. Um, what you said? I think you just start saying that folder. Yeah, it still exists on the server. OK, well, so. It's the times will change. OK, so um, we're going to try to sync the folder I'm currently in with my home directory on the folder. So I'm going to run rsync. And I'm going to spell it correctly. And then I'm going to specify the so same way it goes source destination. So the source in this case is just my current folder. Uh, in this case, just a dot. The destination is going to be my, so again, you guys could use Andy. I have to type the whole thing. And then I type a colon, and um, right. I would type a colon, then I would type the name of the folder I want. Now, you do have to give it some additional options. Um, 
That'll do it too, right? So if you look in the man page for our sync, it'll describe all of these. If I try to just run this, it's probably going to give me an error as soon as I give it my password. Yeah. So by default, it doesn't actually copy directories, which is what we're getting here. It's saying it's skipping the directory, and then it doesn't actually copy anything, because all I was copying was the directory, which it skipped. So there's a series of flags you almost always specify. Uh, I could do dash R. That would recursively go into this directory and copy everything. More often, what you end up doing is dash A. This puts in what's called archive mode. Uh, essentially, what that means is it's going to maintain the folder structure on both sides. It's like it's going to zip it up copy it and then unzip it. Um, so the advantage to doing this over dash R is that if you have folders within folders within folders and there's a bunch of structure there, this will guarantee that that structure remains identical once you copy it to the server. I also added some others. Uh, v just means verbose. It means tell me what you're doing. So that just makes it easier for me to figure out what's going on. And then the Z command means add compression, which is not going to matter in this case, but if you're copying a lot of data and it's compressible data, which we don't really, we're not going to go into what that means, but uh, sometimes you have 100 gigabytes of data, there's a way to losslessly turn it into 50 gigabytes of data, but not lose any information. Uh, if it can do that, it will, so the Z flag will make your copy smaller, which in most situations will make it faster. Um, you said uh, the whole directory is copied? Is because I have the A flag, the whole, so before nothing was copied because it skips directories. But wh why isn't the file copied? Well, because I didn't tell it to copy a file. I told it to copy the local directory. Oh, and it skips directories, so it doesn't try to go into that directory and copy. If I run it with the dash ABZ flag, which 90% of the time you run rsync, you're just going to type these three letters after it because that's the pretty standard thing. And I'm going to have to give my password. Now we'll see it copied the folder. Within the folder, it copied any of the files inside that folder. And then it gives me a little bit of data. It says it ended up uh, saving. So it sent 228 bytes total size. So that's a less than one speed up. That's not what you normally see. If you were copying a bunch of data, this here would generally be like 20 or 30, meaning that it was able to only copy a subset of the data and it went 20 times faster than it would have if you just SCP or something like that. Um, so what would have, what should have happened? I probably copied it. It's just there's like an infinite loop going on. Just yeah, just and copying and copying. Now look. Um, if we now go to the server and look at what we just did, or here, maybe even better, if we run the command a second time. Okay. So you'll notice the second time it didn't send anything at all. Because it had already realized all the files were there when we did it the first time, there was nothing additional it had to do the second time, and thus it did nothing. So whereas SCP would have just stupidly so recopied these again, R seems smart enough to know they're already there and there's no need to do it again. Can you stop I'm sorry, what? What's causing the infinite loop? It's not a loop. So if you do, um, there's a couple more flags. Dash capital P will give you progress of single files, and that's so that you can see that that's what's happening. Yeah, yeah your quotas are that. What are they copying? I, I don't know. So I didn't ever create a copy directory so they copy my own. Home directory? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there shouldn't be that much data in <laughs> So, dash capital P will give you uh, interactive progress. Uh, dash I will give you a little bit more information about what's happening on each file. And the best one for our sake is dash N. Dash N means don't do anything. Just show me what you would do. And usually if you're doing a whole rsync, you're going to want to see what's going to get deleted, what's going to get changed. So I almost always do dash N. So that's what happens. When you do the dash N, you get this dry one. You'll notice it's telling me it's not going to do anything if I run it, because again, those files are already up there. So yeah, a lot of you are copying every file in your home directory, which I don't know what's in the home directory by default, but that could be a decent amount of data that's getting copied to the server. Good news is, after you do it once, if you run rsync a second time, nothing will happen because it's already copied all that stuff once. So you've essentially synced your entire local directory between your local computer and the server, which sometimes is a really handy thing to do. So, you do. If you only do a source and a so that Z is that the compression during yes. the sending? I'm sorry? So it compresses it, it compresses yeah. it before it sends? Yes, it, it compresses sends. it locally and then decompresses it after it transfers. Yeah. So what you actually send over the network, you must call. 
does it preserve all the original file metadata? So the that's data part of what the A does. Change and everything else? Yes. So when it's in archive mode, mm -hmm. yes, uh, but only in archive mode. Uh, so <laughs> archive mode, like I said, it it makes an it makes a tape archive going back to the it's days out of it. So it essentially it preserves it's the state awesome. directory structure, everything of all the files, moves it to the server, what and then unzips that, un unarchives oh. that, and keeps everything the same. Uh, so the A, like I said, that's why the A flag is often useful. It preserves all of that extra data that um, that's sometimes used. Yeah. So it's your like, RAM MV5, it's just the same. Yes, absolutely. So Although even with SCG, yeah. it should be the same thing. Because the metadata doesn't come into the MP5, so. Yeah, I just wondered, like, some things. It's like if you copy it, it you know, changes the time when the file is modified or something. The time that yeah, although that won't affect the MP5 for the file, uh, even if that does get changed. But this will print. So just to let you know how RSync works, it compares the size of the file and the timestamp of the file. And then if one of those is different, that's how it goes to actually do a transfer. Um, you can add dash lowercase c and do a checksum uh, check, and so that's like real deterministic. But normally, just the times are good, and then yeah, it'll it'll update permissions and timestamps and stuff like that with the permission. And the archive flag does avoid a lot of those issues because it does zip it all up first. So even if there would be maybe a weird collision by zipping it first, you avoid that issue. But uh, the man pages will. We could probably spell something options now this rearrange that they went. Um, the man pages will give details on all of these, but the ABZ command is very common. Like Matt said, the in command's handy if you want to test what's going to happen before you actually do it. Um, the C command will really I mean if I guess if you're doing if you're transferring data that really needs to be traceably perfect, the C command will do the MP5s on everything and, and confirm it. Um, and then the P will show you your progress, and the I. The I gives you detailed information right. about what's happening for a file. It'll tell you why it thinks that it needs to be updated and what updates it's going to do. It, it, you know, it might you might be doing permissions like if there's a capital T, it means the times are different, but it's not going to update the times. If it's a lowercase T, it means the times are different and it's going to update them. Something like that. And I can reverse this, so, so I can do it in the opposite direction, just like I just reversed. So now I put the server first and the dot for the local directory second instead of the inverse, which is what I had before. And now it should also not copy anything back down. Um, right. So uh, although it is a plus 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 means it's creating a new file. Okay. So. It, the one trick with rsync is there can be some nuance in the way it handles whether or not you have a trailing slash after a directory. So if you do have a trailing slash, it means not the directory, just everything inside of it. That's really it, the source. Mm -hmm. Only the source. This is kind of such a oh, uh, The, the command line syntax for rsync is there's a lot, the man page is huge, and there's some subtleties there, but it's just like, it's really yeah. useful. I use it to sync my laptop to the desktop and stuff. Um, you can read the man page for all the details we're running out of time, but the basic syntax is that sometimes you do have to pay attention to whether or not you have that trailing slash based upon whether you want to make a copy of the other directory into the directory or whether you want to copy the contents of the other directory into your current directory. Um, there are a few little subtleties in there. I'll put up, I have these notes on our sync that I'll send out in the email afterwards. Um, we just looked at three different tools that all do basically the same thing. In reality, you, SCP doesn't really get used much because our sync does everything it does and more. Uh, SFTP is still handy sometimes if you don't, like I said, if you need to go hunting for a file or something. Uh, but you can pretty much use our sync for everything, especially if you already know, I mean, if you know what you need to copy in advance. Or if you already have an SSH session going in a separate window and you can just look real quick and then just use our sync to actually do the transfer. Um, and like I said, rsync can do local to local too. So we could pull this out and I could rsync just across my local computer, which is handy if I have two folders on my local computer that I need to just keep in sync uh, or do a differential copy between. Any other questions on transferring files back and forth? Yes. So is there a way to set up rsync so it does it automatically like every day or something? Yeah. So you just constantly keep something? Yeah, but you want to be careful because rsync will 
So there's other flags that will back up the change, like the old version of the file, into another directory. Um, there's also a delete flag if you want the directories to be exactly the same. So if the file doesn't exist on the source, but does exist on the destination, it'll delete it. So you want to be careful about running it with uh, schedules. Yeah, you can do it. It's not our stuff, but it's another program that schedules. Okay. Yeah, right. So there's a, there's a scheduling program that you would then tell to run our sync. So we'll probably, maybe we'll... On the front end? Yeah, cron, yeah. cron wouldn't be a bad thing to cover at some point. Maybe we'll try to work that into another lecture. But you can basically automate everything that we've done. Uh, it's all, Linux will let you automate any of it. And it's a general purpose automation tool, so you can automate our sync too. But I mean, yeah, anytime you have... So traditionally, you would never automate a pure sync because of the things Matt said. If someone goes and deletes your files on the other computer, if you have a truly automated sync, then that means they're going to get deleted on your local computer, and uh, that may not be what you want to happen. Mm -hmm. So you got to, you, you, there's a time and place, but you do have to kind of think about what that really means. Mm -hmm. Like a sync's not a backup, they're different, right? Mm -hmm. Other questions? All right. That brings us to the end of our time. We'll stick around for a little while if people are having issues or need to go over any of this a uh, second time. There's some stuff we didn't get to, but like always, we'll try to fit it in down the road. And that's all we have. Yeah, and uh, so we kind of did a lot with SSH and the key files and stuff, and they are really useful. And if you don't quite remember, you can always email me, and I'll, like, you know, forever, I'll be willing to help if you're having trouble getting things set up. Because I know that it was like kind of a lot to do and there was a lot of weird nuance problems. As you can also always fall back to using SSH without key files, right? Key files, well, sometimes they'll be required, but in most cases, they're mainly just a convenience and security factor. Uh, so it's, it's, you can still SSH into something even if you don't want to deal with all that key stuff, Matt did. You just type in your, you do like I've been doing it, type in your password at a time. We'll leave this server online for at least a little while if you guys want to play around over the next few days. Maybe we'll leave it on for the rest of the class. I'll play with it. I'll think about it. Um, we'll see how much people break things. But all right, that's all we have. Thank you, guys.